Today, Wahoo announced three new products to their indoor fitness ecosystem, and one has sparked my interest quite a bit. It's the new Kicker 18, Kicker 4, or just simply the Kicker. They keep the naming conventions pretty simple. This is the fourth revision of the Kicker Direct Driver unit from the original, released back in 2014, and today we see the most significant upgrades to that unit to date. So what got me all excited after reading about the Kicker 18 on paper? Well, they've quietened the unit down. They've gone from a timing belt to a V-belt internally, as you can see here, and things are virtually silent. I guess some would say the best just got better and quieter. Okay, over to a full tech spec rundown of the unit itself. It ships with a Shimano 11-speed 11 1126 cassette, comes with a Wahoo cadence sensor in the box, the rear axle adapters, well, the rear axle compatibility for 130 and 135 quick release, and the adapters in the box support through axle. Power accuracy claimed plus or minus 2%, maximum power 2200 watts, and with that comes a ton of braking force, so it can simulate gradients up to 20%. As with previous Kicker Direct Drive units, the support for bikes is pretty good. We've got support here for Road 24 through to 700C and Mountain Bike 24 inch all the way up to 29er. As expected and always delivered by Wahoo, dual support for Amplus and Bluetooth connectivity. I'll also add another one to the bottom of the list here, Sleeping Human Compatible. Yes, my wife has done quite a few early morning workouts and I've slept all the way through them. So there's a quick rundown of the unit on paper. I guess the next question is, what's it like to ride? How's the power accuracy and is it quiet? Well, no time for the unboxing today. Let's get straight to the Llama lab test and into all those details. Nearing the end of the 250 watt steady state section here for 10 minutes and that blue line's looking pretty smooth. So, happy days there. Okay, into the sprint responsiveness. You can see the power tap up against the Wahoo Kicker. As I hold back just a little bit to unleash just where you need to, which starts about here. Both units reporting 1100 watts plus, so the drivetrain isn't robbing me too much of that sprint responsiveness or those raw numbers. Llama lab test number one complete and data collected. Decided to do Llama lab test number two with the Asio Maduro pedals and the kicker climb. Putting the pairing process to the sword with the kicker 18 and connected straight away. We have up and down, we're good to go. And onto the hanging bridge test for the climb. You can see a dip down there. One thing you'll note, the sound pitch or noise doesn't change as I go from 170 watts up to 400. Now into my over and under session here and the sound captured is probably the most realistic capture I've got of the Kicker 18 because the directional microphone wasn't pointed straight at the unit. So if you listen here, it's pretty much what you can expect standing next to the unit. Yes, that was my heavy breathing you could hear during those interval sessions. Okay, the next half an hour was spent riding up Elta Zwift, putting the trainer up against the Asia Maduro pedals and having the kicker climb do its thing. My summary after those two Llama Lab tests and a number of sneaky other rides I've done this week is noise problem solved, which makes life a little hard now because if people were comparing Kicker versus Neo, it was always the Neo if sound was the number one priority. Now, they're almost one and the same. I'll do a full sound check in just a few moments in this video. Ride feel and inertia is excellent again. That flywheel itself will kick over the pedal stroke. Just like outside, you won't stop on the dead spot, it'll just keep ticking over, which works really well on the flats and also in climbing as well. It's not like pedaling in mud and having to push that pedal over. That flywheel will keep things kicking over. You still have to do the watts, but it feels more realistic. Jumping over here to DC Rainmaker's analysis tool to have a look at the PowerTap P1 pedals first, up against the Kicker 18. Diving in here to the uncalibrated, just out of the box, how did it go? 
233 versus 231 watts there for the first 10 minutes before calibration. So even before spin downs or cals, all looking pretty good. Into the steady state test, we saw it holding watts quite well there in the replay just before. And as expected here, data almost one for one. And up in the 250 watt range, same deal, all looking really good there. In the sprint, again, the replay that we saw before, wasn't robbing me of any watts and pegged those watts pretty well at just over 1100 watts. Into the over and under intervals for 20 seconds. And look, there was a little separation there at 350 and the 350 there. The 450s were closer, but I really wasn't happy with what I was seeing there with the Kicker 18 and the PowerTap P1 pedal. So I gave the unit a little bit more stress test through here. And after 50 minutes, I performed another spin down, which is probably advisable coming straight from the factory. Spin down after 50 minutes or after your first hard ride. And then performing the same over and under tests through here, you can see that it matches a lot better, except I'm just getting a little wonkier throughout the session there. So 197 versus 194, all pretty good. A quick look at the overall stats here from that first Llama Lab test, the average and weighted power, you can pretty much throw those away because I do calibrations all the way through these. But the max power is probably the most important one here to look at to make sure it's not robbing me right at that top end. So 1163 versus 1106, yep, that's a pass from me. Jumping over to Llama Lab test number two with the Asioma pedals and the Kicker Climb set up. Um, pretty much anywhere where I grab the data here, it's pretty good. 145 versus 143 straight out. Um, 196 versus 197, just riding along. Bit of a steady state into the sprint there. Now there is a slight drop here from the kicker. I will look into it, maybe environmental, but there was a slight drop out there. But other than that, the numbers are pretty good. You can see there the kicker is one watt different. I'd put that down to the averaging of the data where it's not uh, reporting just through here. But you can see just riding along, just riding along. It's all looking pretty good. Into the overs and unders. There's another drop there by the kicker. Let's have a closer look at that. So, Something happened there for a few seconds, but averages 273 versus 270. I'm guessing the few missing watts at that drop. I will look into this. Uh, and then up out the Zwift, one for one, no drops. That's just the response time of the pedals there, not dropping out when I did stop pedaling. Um, 243 versus 242. My takeaway from those numbers from Llama Lab Test number one and Llama Lab Test number two with two different power meters is the power coming from the kicker, well within spec and quite accurate. No review of the Kicker 18 would be complete without a direct head-to-head -head sound off with the Taxneo, commonly known as the quietest smart trainer out there. So what I've got set up on the screen here, I have two phones. One was running the decibel meter a few meters away and we're measuring sound at 20 kilometers an hour fly speed, 30, 40, and then as a bit of fun into a sprint with the smaller phone there showing the controlling app and the power that I'm doing. A few things here to note, this is with a shotgun mic pointed straight at the units. So it's as if you're putting your ear almost right to it. And the Tax Neo has an Altegra level cassette, which is known to be a little quieter than the stock standard cassette supplied with the kickers. Very interesting results there. Up against the Tax Neo for sound, so I guess the Kicker versus Neo battle carries on. In wrap up, that's a good update from Wahoo to the Kicker Direct Drive Smart Trainer, and it does what it says on the box. Virtually silent operation, improved ride feel, accurate and responsive. So it does tick all my boxes for a 2018 level Smart Trainer. Price wise on the Kicker 18, we're looking at 1199 US dollars, around 1,000 pounds, 1199 euros, Aussie dollars around 1600. Availability should be very, very soon. Wahoo are pretty good with shipping these units soon after announcement. So there it is, the details and my take on the Kicker 18 Direct Drive Smart Trainer. 
Not bad at all, Wahoo. Not bad. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.